What is Chainlink staking? In this video, we're going to talk about staking Chainlink and why you should be excited about it as a crypto investor. The price of Chainlink's Link token recently hit a four-week high following the release of their updated roadmap, which outlined the route towards staking on their network. But what does this mean? And why has it caused so much excitement for Chainlink users? Welcome to Crypto Made Simple, the best place to learn everything you need to know about crypto. Today, we are talking about Chainlink staking, what it is, how to participate, and what it will mean for the network moving forward. But before we get into it, let's take a minute to explain some definitions. So we're all on the same page. Starting at the beginning, what is Chainlink? Chainlink is a blockchain built on top of the Ethereum network. In short, Chainlink is a provider of information. It connects blockchains with external data. More technically, it sources oracles, which is crypto lingo for data providers, to help return accurate results for blockchains in need of data not contained on their blockchains. Most often, this is so smart contracts can function automatically, with a smart contract essentially being a predefined agreement executed automatically by code. An easy example is a crypto betting app that requires knowing the outcomes of sports events to know which participant won the bet. Person A bets person B that Jake Paul wins or loses his next fight. But when the night of the fight occurs, how does the smart contract know who won the bout? Blockchains can't access the information alone. They need a reliable provider of information to obtain it and translate it into a language their blockchain can read and understand. Here is where Chainlink comes in. By gathering information from various sources known as oracles, then checks it for authenticity and finally provides a result to the buyer. Currently, Chainlink sources from over 1,000 oracles, but this number is always increasing. Which reminds me, we already have a whole video on Chainlink for those looking for a deep dive into the project. We'll leave a link here if you want to check it out. So what about crypto staking? Like everything in crypto, staking can either be easy to understand or overly complex, depending on which platform you're viewing. Basically, staking is a way to verify transactions on a proof-of-stake blockchain like Chainlink, unlike Bitcoin, which uses a proof-of-work model that makes every node compete against each other with a node being any computer hosting the network. Under proof-of-stake, only one person verifies the transaction with the picked node usually being the one with the most staked coins for the longest time while delivering the quickest results. But for most people, the general idea of staking is that it's a way for investors to earn passive rewards on their crypto holdings because in practice, it's a lot like how you deposit cash into a bank account and receive interest on whatever you deposited. Proof of stake blockchains choose the person or entity that has staked the most tokens for the longest time to verify incoming transactions. This is because it is assumed that those who have the most staked for the longest time probably have the most invested in the ecosystem. As a result, they are considered most likely to provide the best answers and least likely to cheat the system. But if you agree to verify transactions and then submit false transactions, you can have your deposited stake taken either partially or entirely by the blockchain. This keeps everyone honest because there's always more to lose than to gain. So how does this all come together? What is Chainlink staking and why does it create such a buzz of excitement around its launch? According to the roadmap update, staking will offer the Chainlink ecosystem four key benefits. These are to increase network security, enable community participation, generate sustainable long-term rewards, and establish a reputation network for its oracles. Let's break those down further. First, increased network security. When we talk about increasing network security, we're talking about the proof of stake consensus mechanism we explained earlier. Those who choose to can become proof of stake validator nodes. This is where you agree to verify incoming transactions for the network in exchange for a reward. But not everyone who stakes the network is a validator node because some people can stake through pooling their assets together for a share of the reward. For example, with Ethereum, to become an Ethereum node it requires 32 ETH to be staked to the network. At the time of this video, that would roughly be $30,000, which is a lot of money for most people. For most people, the only way to stake in Ethereum is through pooling, which just means grouping their assets together and receiving a percentage of the rewards based on their shared amount. This also benefits the network overall. 
because allowing more people easier access to verified transactions makes the network more secure. This is because the more people stake, the better decentralized the network becomes. If you're curious why decentralization matters, the more decentralized the network, the harder it is to disrupt, hack, or close it down. If a platform is centralized through only one server, any disruption to that server can cause a blackout for the entire network. Famously, this happened over Christmas 2014 when the PlayStation Network was attacked, leaving users unable to access their accounts for days. Under proof of stake, the user selected next to verify is chosen randomly, with the number of tokens staked to the network and for how long you've had them staked being the two biggest factors in your chance of being picked. The logic here, the more people who stake and the longer they have their tokens deposited with the network, the less likely it is that they would try and cheat the system, given their staked funds can be slashed or confiscated by the network for misbehaving. We already mentioned that proof of stake was less energy intensive, but it also makes it way more challenging to hack because it's not clear who the next node will be. Hacking proof of work is much more straightforward, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. To hack a proof of work network, you have to control 51% of the verifying nodes. Then you could submit false transactions on a permanent blockchain block. Of course, there are pros and cons to both consensus mechanisms, but that is discussion for another time. Next, we have increasing community participation. Currently, Chainlink requires setting up a dedicated node and learning how to set up smart contracts to become a verifying node. This reduced the number of participants running Chainlink nodes. However, with staking comes the ability for anyone to participate without having to learn any of the complicated parts. Of course, the complicated element is still there, but there will also be the ability to pool assets, which removes most of the technical know-how required. Regardless, unlike other proof-of-stake blockchains, with Chainlink, you're staking to one of the Oracle services they utilize for results. What you're looking for is an Oracle who provides consistent, accurate results and delivers them quickly. The more transactions they verify, the more you're rewarded. But this works both ways, with Chainlink currently exploring how they will handle misbehaving nodes. The node stake will be slashed, but Chainlink is exploring redistribution, including ways that a small amount of the confiscated link could be used to protect the backers of these Oracle providers. Luckily, there's also an option to report, so if you catch your oracle misbehaving, you can report them for a reward. There are also benefits for the oracles, but we'll return to those when we talk about reputation networks later. Moving on, we have generating sustainable long-term rewards. The best way to achieve sustainable long-term results is to encouraging reporting of bad behavior to ensure that smooth operation of the Chainlink ecosystem. If you believe an oracle is misbehaving, report it. And if you're correct, you can receive a reward for reporting it. The theory is that the more accurate the results, the larger the network is likely to grow in the long run. Filtering out bad actors through community participation generates more sustainable revenue as more requests continue to come in for Chainlink services. As the network grows, so do the network fees, which can be rewarded to stakers. Because the network randomizes the verifier rather than making them all compete to solve a puzzle, it uses a lot less energy to operate than other blockchains, making it naturally more sustainable than some of its proof-of-work competitors. Additionally, according to the release, native token emissions from the link token supply will be used to create an initial base level of rewards for stakers, with the goal of tapering off over time as other sources of rewards grow and begin to be directed to stakers, meaning that Chainlink has already created a reserve pool to ensure the distribution of rewards, at least for the immediate future. Lastly, we have the Reputation Network. Over time, the best oracles will likely have the most stakers, why wouldn't people stake with them if they consistently provide correct answers rapidly? This will create a natural hierarchy between oracles and a way for oracles to distinguish themselves from their competitors. Additionally, Chainlink plans to use this reputation system to create a selective list eligible for higher paying jobs. This reputation system, plus how much each oracle is willing to stake themselves into the Chainlink system, will determine which tier of jobs they can access. In the long run, this should help create the sustainable long-term rewards they're promising. Over time, it will become clear which oracles are the best for the network, 
ensuring you are less likely to stake to the worst behaving node on the network accidentally. To finish, I'm sure you're wondering how you can participate. Initially, the staking pool will be capped at 25 million link tokens, but Chainlink has stated that this may increase to 75 million based on demand. The staked amount will be locked up until the full release of the staking update, where they can choose their commitment periods. To ensure fairness, those who apply to be a part of this pool will be filtered down based on how long you've had your link tokens. So this might mean you're unable to join the first round of staking, but eventually it will be open to everyone after testing, and anyone who wants to participate will be able to do so. So what about the actual staking rewards? Should you be lucky enough to be able to stake your link to the network, you'll be locked into annualized staking rewards of up to 5% guaranteed by the native token emissions we discussed previously. After the first round of capped staking, the percentage return will be based on the user fees and the length of your commitment period. The longer you commit your stake, the more of a percentage you will be given for staking. While 5% may seem like nothing during a bull market, it can mean much more during a bear market, especially when outside of crypto, there is a rise in global inflation to match. And just to be clear, a bull market is a period of positive activity where prices seemingly only go up, and a bear market is a period of little consumer interest and often declining prices for most crypto assets. But both bull and bear markets are normal parts of the larger crypto cycle and neither last forever. This is why it's always so important to do your own up-to-date research before committing your hard-earned cash anywhere. In conclusion, let's summarize Chainlink staking. Chainlink staking is simply depositing on the Chainlink platform. It will help increase network security and give users a way to earn passive income on their link holdings. Additionally, it will help generate sustainable, long-term rewards by allowing holders to stake to the best oracles on the network, decreasing slashing penalties for the stakers from accidentally staking to misbehaving networks. And finally, it will create a reputation network that can allow oracles access to higher paying jobs and ensure the highest possible chance of returns for their stakers. That's all for today's video. If this video was helpful or if you'd like to know more, go check it out other videos at Crypto Made Simple. And don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching.